welcome everybody. My name is Mia and this is So Girly Bags. And today we're gonna take an old leather purse and add some gorgeous African mud cloth to it. And we're gonna give it a new look. African mud cloth is a traditional Malian fabric that is dyed with fermented mud and plant dye. This fabric can take four days to a week to make, depending on the humidity, the rain, and the weather conditions. Mud cloth is a tradition that has its roots in the 12th century in the West African country of Mali. It is worn by hunters as ritual protection and a badge of status. It is used to represent social status, proverbs, and historical events. They also represent the wisdom of a tribe. The women who wear the cloth create the stories and the hidden meanings behind them. So if you have a ton of bags laying around and you don't know what to do with it, cut them up, take the good leather off of them. Um, this bag that I used, it had these hideous pockets all over the front of them. I really didn't like it. I liked the bag, but I probably would never wear it because of all the pockets that was on it. It just didn't look cute. So I decided to just take the good leather off of it, um, use some of this African mud cloth, and make a gorgeous bag with it. So if you have old bags laying around and you don't know what to do with it, well, just go ahead and make yourself a beautiful leather and African mud cloth bag like this one. All right, let's get started, guys. So I took the strap off first. The strap was gorgeous and beautiful. It's braided. I really loved it, so I'm definitely going to use it. And then I decided to just go ahead and cut down the sides of the bag. So I cut off the top facing of the bag first and just went all the way around the trim of the top of the bag. And then once I got to the side seam, I just went down each side of both sides of the bag and just cut off the whole back panel. And that's what I used as my template or my pattern so that way I can just make that the size of the bag. I also took off the bottom panel of the bag because I did want to reuse that as well and keep that as the bottom of the bag of the new bag. So I used that panel and just traced it onto the African mud cloth and then cut out our new bag pattern. So once I cut that out, I folded it in half just so I can make sure that the pieces match on each side. Make sure everything is nice and even when you're cutting out your front and back pieces so I just fold it in half just to make sure everything looks symmetrical then I just took the leather panel that I cut off the back of the old bag and just cut all the way down the middle to separate the left from the right side and then I took one of those left sides one of those panels and just put it on the left side of the African mud cloth and just cut down the middle of the African mud cloth because what I want to do is just use those panels to make opposites on the bag. Then I used a little bit of fusible fleece and just iron the African mud cloth onto the fusible fleece just to give it a little more stability and thickness because it is thick already because it does like I said feel like canvas but I wanted to just add a little bit extra thickness to it so that way it'll match the thickness of the leather. So then I went ahead and just put the leather and the African mud cloth pieces together laid them on top of each other right sides facing and then I just clipped them together and then sewed down the middle what well, will be the middle of the panel I used about a quarter inch seam allowance um, I also used a Teflon foot that makes it easy to sew across the leather it is more of like a plastic foot that you can put on your sewing machine and it just really makes it easy when you use the metal foot it doesn't glide over the leather as easy as it does over cotton so 
but now that you have one panel done I went ahead and opened up the seam and I used a little bit of double-sided tape what I did was I cut the double-sided tape in the middle of the strip and that way it was thin enough to just place it right on the edge of the pieces of the seam so that way I could just hold the seam down when I'm sewing because a lot of times you, you know you can't really pin leather I mean you can stick clips on leather but I mean where I have the seam on this it was just really hard to keep the seam down so I can sew across the leather so I decided to just use a little bit of double-sided tape which makes it easy just to hold down the seam so I just went ahead and pressed that down really good and now the seam just stays intact. So now I'm going to top stitch over this on each side. I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam on the leather side and then I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam on the mud cloth side. And I'm going to do this to both of the panels, the front and the back. I did not do it for the side panels, um, it's a little hard to get to on the side panels so I just made sure I did it to the front and the back it just gives it a really nice neat stitch um, finish on the front of the bag so now we're gonna go ahead and do that to the other side These are the side panels. So I did remove one side of the leather side panel that was already on the old bag. And I just used that to be the pattern piece to cut out a little bit of the African mud cloth to make the side panel um, for the other side of the bag. Now I'm just gonna use my seam ripper and just rip off the bottom panel on the bag. And now what I'm doing is just using that front panel that we created as the pattern piece so I can cut out the lining. I had some gorgeous safari fabric that had all the animals on it. It almost just looked like we were in Africa. So I just was like, why not just use that as the lining to this bag? It all just goes together. African mud cloth, safari, I love it. So I'm using that side panel piece to just make the pattern for the side panel of the lining. And now I'm using the bottom panel that I cut off the old bag to use it as the pattern piece to make the, the lining bottom. I used a little bit of interfacing to put on the back of the lining just to give the lining a little bit more structure so I did iron a little bit of that on the back of the lining fabric. So I cut out interfacing for all the lining pieces and fused it to the back of the lining fabric. Now I'm going to take the side panels and just place them on the sides of the front panel, whichever piece you decide is going to be your front panel. And I just clip them along the left and right sides of the front panel. And then after I clip them, I just sew down the side panels to the front panel. I put the African mud cloth side panel on the leather side 
and I put the leather side panel on the African mud cloth side just to give it a little design. And then I placed the back panel right side facing over the front panel and then I just clipped the side panels to the back panel. And then after clipping, I just sew it all the way down both sides, attaching the back panel to the side panel. And then I took the base that I took off of the old bag Found the center. I used the center of the front and back panel seam and attached it to the seam of the base. The base that I took off of the bag, it already had a middle seam, so I was just able to just make sure those middle seams match up. And then I just clipped the base all the way around the bag. But my wonder clips, they are wonderful. And then I just sewed all the way around the bottom of the bag. I'm still using my Teflon foot to sew around the base. It just makes it easier. Sometimes I use it without even using the metal foot. Or instead of using the metal foot, it's just easier going over certain types of fabric. And now I'm just going to sew the inside lining bag the exact same way. I started with the front panel, clipped the side panels on, and then attached the back panel and then the base. I did decide to make an inside pocket. I just used a little bit of the mud cloth to make the inside pocket. And now I'm just attaching the base to the lining. Now I'm gonna just insert the lining bag inside of the outer bag. Push out all the corners of the outer bag. Make sure all your seams are pushed out. My sewing machine is pretty tough. It can sew over leather, but when it comes to thick pieces in the seams on the leather, I do have to use my side wheel and just kind of crank slowly over the thick pieces of leather and usually i can get through it eventually i'll buy an industrial sewing machine but for now my brother my brother st371 hd does the trick now i'm just gonna fold the inner and outer bag towards each other and then clip the entire rim of the bag in place I grabbed the strap that I took off the old bag and I made some little tabs with some old <clears throat> with some old scrap leather pieces that I had. I cut them maybe about an inch by two inches and just put those inside of the rings on the strap. I did sew across those tabs just to kind of hold them in place before inserting them into the sides of the purse. So that way the little tabs don't shift around while I'm trying to get them inside the inside sides of the bag. So then I just inserted it into the side of the bag and just held it with some clips. After that, I'm just gonna sew around all of those layers and the bag is complete. Super cute, I really love it. I think I'm gonna use it every day. It's just my everyday tote bag, hobo bag, shoulder bag, whatever you wanna call it. But I love this African mud cloth. It's just really pretty. 
and with the leather it makes it really durable so I'm really excited about this bag so I hope you find some of your old bags and become creative with it and just try to make something really nice with it instead of throwing them away or giving them away you can definitely make something beautiful with it So don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.